Which one should you buy? The M4 iPad Pro with the iPad OS 26 or a MacBook? Well, I've done this video in the past, several times actually, and the winner was always the MacBook. I always believed that the MacBook was the best choice for most people. But this time, oh boy, I'm wrong. Because I might be almost recommending the iPad. Let's get started. So, before we start, drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel, but I think that this time that Apple released iPadOS 26 is much, much closer for this competition. I think that iPadOS 26 changed the landscape for iPad ever. Again, this device is awesome. When I say awesome, awesome. It's pretty much perfect right now. You have a touchscreen, you have amazing hardware, portability, you have iPadOS 26, which has been completely renewed to be a much more powerful software for you for actually to be a laptop replacement. And then on the other side, you have an ancient device, at least an older device. You have still mouse and keyboard, input method, no touchscreen, you have more ports, yes, but it's more of a portable computer, not a twin one. And the iPad is more of an hybrid computer, a twin one. It's a bridge between the iPhone and the Mac, and I think that right now it's probably the most powerful one out of the three. So the iPad Pro with the M4 chip features the M4 chip, and the M4 chip is a very, very powerful chip. You can get the M4 MacBook Air for around $1,200. You can get the M4 iPad Pro with the keyboard, the Magic Keyboard, for around $1,800. So, although the M4 iPad Pro has the same chip as the MacBook Air, it's actually more expensive. So, why buy an iPad Pro? Well, an iPad Pro is a device that can do anything. It can be a streaming media device on your couch, it can be a laptop, it can be an iPad for kids, and it can be your iPhone, at least your touchscreen device. Again, the Apple Pro does so many things, and it has a better screen than the MacBook Air. It has, in my opinion, better hardware, has better speakers, at least on par with the M4 MacBook Air, and it does have an option to have a Magic Keyboard and a Magic Mouse with the Magic Keyboard that you can buy. And also, it has the Apple Pencil. This is a very, very big power play for the iPad Pro. This enables you to use the Apple Pencil for artists or to draw, to take notes, university, whatever you want. I think that this is the most complete device, but it carries with it very high costs. Again, the whole package that you are seeing, the Apple Pencil, the iPad Pro, the M4 iPad Pro, 13 inch, and the Magic Keyboard costs more than $2,000. While the M4 MacBook Air comes with all of that, minus the Apple Pencil capabilities, and costs $1,200. The same storage, the same 256 gigabytes of storage. That's, that's insane. And the Apple Pro has less RAM than the MacBook Air, which has 16 gigabytes of RAM. So, it's a tough question. It's a tough question to answer which one should you buy. Again, I have a MacBook and I have an iPad, two different devices. My MacBook serves me well. It does me the job that a MacBook should do, which is to work. I use this device for work. I edit YouTube videos, I use Excel, love Excel sheets here, much, much better on this bigger screen. And I actually prefer to edit videos on Final Cut Pro for Mac than Final Cut Pro for iPad. So MacBook currently, for me, is the way to go if you are talking about work. But if you are talking about that, the everyday device, but you don't have money to buy both, then of course, go for an iPad. I think that with iPadOS 26, most of your laptop needs will be replaced by the iPad. Now with the new file system, now with the new multi-window support, now with the menu system at the top, now with the new mouse cursor that is much, much better and closer for the Mac, now with all the App Store capabilities that you want, and of course, now with the growth of social media and work-based apps, and of course, with the evolution of other based apps for Mac, or for Windows that have carried out for the iPad and have been growing with time. I think that this time right now is one of the best times to buy the iPad. I think that Apple changed the game with iPadOS 26 and it's now much more competitive to actually compare it for a MacBook replacement. But it does not stop there. In terms of overall hardware, I do believe that the iPad beats the Mac in only one aspect. And that's the screen and everything that comes with it. The touchscreen, the 120 hertz, the OLED panel, anything that works with the screen is better on the iPad. But everything else, is much better on the MacBook. The MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, does not matter which one you choose, it's better on the Mac. Because you have more space, you have more volume, and you have simply more power to share. You have a bigger battery. So the iPad Pro is constrained by its own size, by its own innovation, by its own impossible standards. This is a thin device. This is like 5.5 millimeters thin. Insane, guys, like, it's insane. While the MacBook, especially the MacBook Pros, are a thick boy, again, you simply cannot beat physics. So the MacBooks will perform better under thermal constraints, the MacBook will perform better under very big loads, and especially the Macs will have much better speakers because they have more volume, they have more space, and the speakers can bounce inside. It's simply physics that you cannot run. But the iPad Pro does 
an insane job with this thing, its actual size, because this size, its constraints, and its ridiculous thinness makes the iPad Pro seem impossible at bare high. Again, you have incredible speakers, the best speakers ever on a device of this size. It, they are as good as the MacBook Air speakers. You have an incredible display, and you have incredible power with the M4 chip. So if you don't need more than your everyday needs as a computer, if you don't need more than enough, if you don't think that, oh, I'm a power user, I may need more power, then the iPad Pro is for you. Again, this will be more than enough in terms of power. You will love the touchscreen. You will love the Netflix app. You will love the Disney Plus app. You will love the access to all of your favorite apps that are available on the App Store right here. You don't really care about the other stuff, the, the other technical stuff like SolidWorks or industrial programs or softwares that you need to run on a virtual machine on the Mac. So there are differences. This is more of a professional device. This is more for your everyday Joe. Again, if you are an everyday Joe, if you just want to use your iPad Pro for an everyday Joe, buy the iPad Pro. If you want to use your device for work, serious work, and you know when you are doing serious work, the MacBook is your choice. But then, then you ask, what about the MacBook Air? Well, the MacBook Air is a different story. The MacBook Air has the same chip as the iPad Pro. The MacBook Air has about the same keyboard, if you compare with the Magic Keyboard on the iPad Pro. The MacBook Air has about the same ports, two USB-C ports, while the MacBook Pro also has two USB-C ports. The only difference is that the MacBook Air has the headphone jack, while the iPad Pro does not. And here's the thing, in that case, it's very, very difficult to actually compare both. Before iPadOS 26, I would say buy the MacBook Air. It's much cheaper and much more powerful, but now with iPadOS 26, there's, there's an argument for you to buy the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro now has the touchscreen, the iPad Pro now has the Apple Pencil, and the iPad Pro now has all the capabilities that the MacBook Air has. It has the same chip, the same software, the same, almost, at least almost the same Finder app, and it has also the multi-window support, the menu bar, all the things that you love about macOS are being implemented on the iPad Pro. And now with iPadOS 26, it's almost a guarantee into the future that Apple will bet that the Apple Pro will become more powerful and will give it more Mac features. So the MacBook Air might be an option for you if you love macOS and if you need a computer. But I would say if you are a normal everyday Joe, buying an iPad Pro might be the best time right now. Again, if you compare the hardware, I do believe that in terms of the best out of the best, the MacBook Air still has the best keyboard, still has the best trackpad, still has the best ports I.O., still has the best overall shape, the best overall portability, has bigger batteries, so has better battery life. But the Apple Pro has that, that different factor. It has a touchscreen, it has Netflix apps, it has all the apps that you need and love on your iPhone and brings you closer. So it's a very, very tough choice. If you want a very powerful machine, like a MacBook Pro 16 inch or 14 inch, then comparing it to the iPad Pro is a different story. These machines are different. They have better screens, bigger screens, 16 and 14 inches. These are mini LEDs. This has an OLED display. This is better in terms of quality. This is bigger. So if you compare them both, they are also really, really good. This one is a bit brighter. I hope Apple puts these OLED displays on the MacBook Pro. The speakers are much, much better on these 14 and 16 inch devices. The keyboard are also insane. The trackpad is also insane. They have more IO, they have an SD card slot, they have the HDMI port, they have three USB-C ports and also have the headphone jack. This also has simply more capabilities with macOS and the things that it unlocks on macOS makes sense for a professional. While the Apple Pro has unlocked all of the other macOS features that are not as important for professionals, but very, very important for your everyday job. This is a good everyday computer, this is a professional computer, and it actually depends which one do you want and which one do you need. If you need a professional computer, of course this video is obsolete and you should get a Mac. If you need a computer again, it enters that great zone that I was talking about before, and it's very, very tough to choose between an iPad and a MacBook Air. The thing is, do you want a touchscreen display? Do you want Mac OS? You have to decide because either of them, they are deal breakers. If you want the best value one, buy the MacBook Air, $1,200 gets you everything, 16 gigabytes of RAM. I think you can get like for $1,200, you can get the 13 inch size with 512 gigabytes of storage. But if you want a 15 inch option, you can also go for the MacBook Air, which has, I think, if I'm not wrong, $1,400 or $1,300 gives you 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM, if I'm not wrong. So at the end of the day, if you want the best value one, buy the 15 inch MacBook Air, or at least the 13 inch MacBook Air, and you'll be awesomely served. You have a big screen, it's an LCD display, but it's P3 color gamut, more than enough. It has 60 Hertz, it does not have 120. Other than that, you have the same amount of ports, the same performance, a better form factor for work, and overall a better computer. If you want the best device, not the best value, or not the best work computer, you just simply want 
the best device out of them all. I think that the iPad Pro is the best device and in the future will be the most important one. But let me know in the comments below what you think, which one of these two form factors would you choose, an iPad Pro or a MacBook? Now with iPadOS 26 has made it very, very difficult. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Thank you guys for watching. Drop a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye.